Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to focus on the Oscal PowerMax 3600 and how this unit, paired with a really small generator like this 2500 watt generator, can give you 100 hours of runtime during an outage. This is literally the ultimate power station paired with a tiny generator for a huge output. This power station weighs about 100 pounds, so this is not something I'm gonna be carrying out into the woods to go camping. But if you want serious backup power for your home in case of an emergency, this is definitely the unit. And pairing this with the generator, you have the ultimate backup power system. Let's pull the camera in close and let me show you just why this is so great. Okay, so I tried to move this into the light here because I really wanna just show you kind of the controls, how this unit works, and then we're gonna talk about why this paired with the generator is truly the best solution I can think of for my home. And most likely you'll feel the same for your home as well. So just starting on the front here, you can see we've got three regular, you know, AC outlets. These are 20 amp outlets, and you can tell that by the cross hatch uh, in one of the blades. Then moving along in this covered spot, we actually have a TT30 outlet. This is perfect if you wanna hook this up to an RV, a camper, or even your home's transfer switch for a generator if you have one. Now this is not a 240 system, but you can definitely plug in a TT30 plug here and you can get an adapter to one of the four prong twist locks for a standard generator inlet and you can power at least a leg that is 120 volts. And, and I do that all the time with some of my non 240 generators. Moving on over here, we've got our DC outlet, commonly known as like a car cigarette lighter. We've got two barrel connectors that are 12 volt. And then over here, we've got two USB C's, each are 100 watts. And then we've got four USB A's. Now, my favorite feature on this power station, and I've said it before on the channel, all power stations should have lights. The Oscal has a light. Very, very happy to see that. Now, I'm gonna turn this around in just a minute and we'll go over the specs of the unit. But on a very high level, just to start, this is a 3600 watt hour battery, which is a huge battery. This is significantly larger than the Oscal that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago on the channel that I paired with my Predator generator. And pairing the small one with the generator gave me a crazy runtime. Pairing this with the generator, off the charts. Let me show you how this works though. Turn it on, I'm just gonna press and hold. So as it boots up, you're gonna see the screen light up. And I'm just bringing the camera a little bit closer here. Basically you can see that we're at a 56% state of charge. We're not pulling in any power right now because it's not charging. And we're not outputting any power right now because I don't have, have anything connected. This button right here would be for Bluetooth if you want to connect to an app. I don't really use apps for most of these power stations, so I'm not overly concerned about that. To turn the USBs on, you just simply press the button. Same for DC. And then for AC, same concept. You press the button, but... And now my favorite feature is the light. And I saw another review of this unit, and they knocked the unit. They said the light doesn't work. They were very negative and, and completely unfair. This unit works perfect. And that other company that reviewed this basically did this. They said, oh, look, <clears throat> the light doesn't work. It doesn't work. It came broken. No, the light works perfect. You press and hold it, and then the light will come on. There's nothing wrong with the light. It absolutely works perfect the way it's designed to work. So I don't think we're going to use the strobe light feature personally, but I guess it is nice to know that it has it. So that's the basic operation of this unit. Um, I should also point out the wheels are super nice. And if you saw from the intro, they're very quiet. These are rubber wheels. So you're not gonna make a lot of noise. When the unit is on the ground like this, the wheels are actually not on the ground. There's basically rubber pads under it that elevate the unit just a little bit. It also has a telescoping handle, like a luggage basically. So you can move this around very, very easily. Now, as I said in the intro, this is not a light power station. This is about a hundred pounds. So you're not gonna take this hiking with you for a weekend. But this is something that you definitely would wanna keep in your home because this is absolutely something you're gonna to wanna to pull out from behind the couch when you have a power outage. So let me do this, let me just stand up and I wanna show you just how easy it is to move this. And with one hand, I'm just gonna pick this up. Very easy to roll around, super, super easy to roll, super easy to move. And let me just stand it up because I wanna show you underneath We've got very thick rubber feet in three locations. So when the unit is back in its horizontal position, the wheels can spin freely because it's elevated completely by these rubber pads right here. Now I'm gonna throw a graphic up on the screen here 
And real fast, I just want to go over the specs. We have a total power output of 3,000 watts. That's a 3,000 watt inverter. Uh, we have multiple USB type A's, multiple USB type C's. We can charge input from a car. Uh, we have an Anderson input connector that can basically go from 12.6 volts, uh, 30 amps max to 378 watts max. Our battery capacity is a 3600 watt hour battery and our AC input is 100 to 120 volts, whereas our DC input is 12 volts to 24 volts, 8 amps max. I just want to point out that our solar input is from 11 to 150 volts, 15 amps, 1600 watt max, which is great. It's a very strong solar input. Um, moving on to the back here, I'm just going to move the little cover, and you can see we have our Anderson input, 11 to 150 volts DC, 15 amps. We have a selector, selector switch for fast or slow charging, circuit breaker reset, and what I love to see is your standard computer type plug input. Now guys, look, a lot of people like to talk about what power stations can do. I'm actually gonna show you what this can do. So if we had a blackout right now, what I would do is I would take this out from behind the couch, which is where I keep it, because you can keep it in this position or you can move it vertically. And again, there's little pads on both sides so you can very easily stand it up or keep it laid down like this. But what I would do is I'd pull it out from behind the couch, I would turn it on, and I'd plug in some lights right away in my phone chargers, that way I can just immediately have power and see what I'm doing. But if I want to use it in the kitchen, maybe I want to power my fridge or maybe I want to power the microwave or the toaster or the coffee maker. Those are very power intense items. I don't want to have to drag this around different places in the house. So its home base is going to be in the living room where I can plug stuff in. But then I always keep these power reels laying around. And this one I have behind the couch, kind of where I keep the unit. And my plan is to basically take the cord, plug it into here, and then bring this power reel where I need it. So if I want to use some appliances in the kitchen, I'm going to bring this into the kitchen. If I want to bring it upstairs, I'll just take the power cord reel upstairs. And you can plug in multiple power cord reels, or you can do what I had suggested earlier. If you have a transfer switch, you can very easily pick up an adapter for a TT30 to one of the, I think it's an L1430R plug, uh, which is what most of the generators take and you can plug this into your transfer switch. And I've done that before. I actually would bring this outside, but it's very, very cold outside today. Uh, and it's not great for lithium iron phosphate batteries to be in below freezing temperature. Um, but let's do this because I wanna show you how this works. We're gonna plug a vacuum cleaner into this, do a little vacuuming here in the outdoor prepper uh, household because a vacuum takes a lot of power. You're talking about a thousand watts. Then we're gonna plug this reel into here. We're gonna bring it into the kitchen we're going to test it on some appliances that are also very power hungry. And then we're going to wrap it up by explaining how this paired with a very small generator, like a 2,500 watt generator, can give you a crazy, maybe 100 hour runtime. So let's hook this up and let's bring it in the kitchen. Okay, so I've got this plugged in now, the reel. Power station is on, AC outlet is on. And despite what a lot of people think, a refrigerator does not take a lot of power at all. In fact, you're talking just a few hundred watts, if that. And when they're running, again, the compressor kind of turns off for a while, even less power. Uh, probably the defrost cycle is your highest usage. So I don't think a fridge is a good test. A toaster oven, however, takes a lot more power. So I've plugged the toaster into the reel here, which is on from the power station. Let's put it on a toast cycle and then let's walk over to the power station and see kind of what we're pulling. So I heard the fan spin up on the power station from across the room. So let's go ahead and walk back in there now. I'm just gonna follow the cable here so you can see that there's no breaks in the cord. It's not plugged into anything else. And yeah, look at that. We are pulling 1800 watts from the power station Fan has spun up a little bit as expected because we want to keep these batteries cool. And to me, that is an absolute, absolute win here. The next thing I want to do, is I cleared a little space here. I want to take the microwave because these usually run at a high power and you know they have kind of a, an inrush when they start. So microwave is zeroed out. I'm going to set this to one minute and then we're going to walk again back to the power station. We're going to see how much power it is actually pulling from the power station. Let's go ahead and just hit one minute on the microwave. That started right up. Let's just follow the cord back. And I can tell you I hear the cooling fans have spun back up. So taking a look at the screen, very similar to the toaster. We're actually pulling 1622 watts uh, on the microwave. And I like that the fans just came right up to speed to keep that battery cool. 
Okay, a vacuum cleaner is another device that through its universal motor takes a lot of power and you're regularly going to be looking at probably in the area of seven to, 700 to 1000 watts. So I've got it plugged in. Let's again try to turn on this device. As the motor starts, there's going to be an inrush of current and pretty sure this will be able to handle it with no problem. And I know the camera is a little bit away from me, but I'm looking at the screen and in fact, maybe I can grab the camera uh, off screen and I'll point it to it, but we're pulling 895 watts with the vacuum, with the universal motor, and no issues at all with this power station. I just wanted to grab the camera, and again, we're gonna point it at the screen while I start the vacuum, just so you guys can see, again, the, uh, the power output here. So we're at 801 watts, 790, right in that area. Now, another question I get asked often is, how are you gonna charge this? What happens when the battery goes dead? You know, you've been using it all day, you know, after a prepper dog has come by. And the answer is, I have a dedicated 25 foot 12 gauge extension cord. And you want a 12 gauge, you don't want a 16 gauge, you don't want a 14 gauge, you wanna stick with 12, because this is more rated for heavy duty use. Now, this power station has slow and fast charging, and you're gonna be pulling in a minimum of 1,000 watts, probably even closer to 1600 watts if you're on fast charging to charge this. And what I plan on doing is taking this dedicated 12 gauge extension cord, plugging it in to the, uh, to the cord for the unit, and I'm gonna run it outside where I have a very small 2500 watt dual fuel propane gasoline generator, and that generator on propane has crazy efficiency. At a quarter load, you're talking 34 hour runtime on that generator. And we're gonna be pulling more than a quarter load, so I'm gonna do the calculations in just a second, but I wanna bring you outside and just show you the size of the generator that we're gonna to use to charge this. Okay guys, so it's very cold outside, so what I did was I brought the generator inside just so I can show you kind of what we're gonna ultimately do, uh, not on video, but this is the plan. So we've got the power station. This is a 2,500 watt dual fuel generator, which means it runs on propane or gasoline, and I made the calculation. So at a quarter load on a 20 pound barbecue tank, this generator will run for about 34 hours. Now, this is gonna take more than a quarter load to, to charge up. So this will be pulling about 1200 watts on slow charge. That means we'll get about 12 hours of runtime from this generator if it ran continuously. But this takes about 2.5 hours to charge. So basically, we can get 5.12 charge cycles out of this generator before it has exhausted a 20 pound propane tank. And basically what that means is, if you're using this to power your fridge, your lights, your phone chargers, the television, the internet, occasionally you're gonna run a toast cycle or the microwave or a coffee maker, you're looking at about 20 hours of power from this unit before it is depleted and you need to recharge. So, by pairing this with the generator in a 20 pound tank, you're basically looking at 100 hours of power between this unit and one 20 pound propane tank. That is a massive amount of runtime that you would never get from a tank of gasoline or a tank of propane, which is why pairing a solar generator or a power station with a traditional generator is totally the ultimate way to go. I also just wanna point out that this has pass through charging. So if you're having this hooked up to your lights, your devices, the fridge, and the battery is now flashing, you know, that it's almost out of power, what you can do is you can take this 12 gauge cable, connect it to the generator and start the recharging process while this is still powering your devices because it has passed through power to allow you to charge and power devices. Guys, I hope that it was very evident from the demonstrations inside with all the devices that this was able to power along with the calculations of runtime from the generator that these two units combined will literally give you 100 hours of runtime. Tell me where else you're gonna get that from a 20 pound propane tank. You're just simply not. I hope this video was helpful. Do me a favor, I own this Oscal Power Max 3600 and I own the 1800. They're both awesome units. I bought the 1800 first and then I picked this up. But if you got questions, leave a question, leave a comment, like and subscribe. I'll do my best to answer and I will certainly see you on the next one because we've got even more power stations to review coming up next.